Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Mm -hmm. We're going to begin in verse number 1 through 4. Yes, yes. Not a lot of, not a lot of reading this morning. Amen. Matthew chapter 4. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Thank yeah, you for your yeah. presence. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Then was Jesus yes. led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted huh. of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, yeah. he was afterward and hungered. Mm -hmm. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Yeah. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of yes. God. Can you say amen? amen? This morning I want to talk about overcome the urge. <laughs> overcome amen. the urge. Amen. 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 Let's bow uh, for a word of prayer. God, I thank you, God, for this opportunity. I thank you, God, for this place. I thank you, God, for this, your people. I thank you, God, for every ear that would hear this word. And I pray, oh, God, that you would let this word go forth so potent, oh, God, that it would touch lives, that it would change minds, that it would redirect thoughts, that it would give perspective and understanding. Let my word today be spirit. Let my words be life today. Let your Holy Spirit Feed my mind, God, yes, that I would God. speak on those things that you would have me to speak. Remember my prayers, oh God, and hear, see the needs of your people. Open up their ears, God, that they would hear. Open up their eyes that they would see. Open up their minds that they would understand. And God, I pray, oh God, even that you would open up their hearts, that they would receive even the stoniest of hearts. Let this word be so potent, God, that it will penetrate even the hardest of the heart. Hear my, th hear my thoughts today. Hear my mind and hear my spirit in Jesus' name. Hear my heart and amen. amen. Help me today, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Overcome the urge. Overcome the urge. There's stories like this in the Bible that really draw me to it. Sometimes people discredit the word of God because of many reasons, but the more I study it, the more I read it to yeah. understand it, and not just to quote it, but to understand it, I find that it becomes so valid in your spiritual walk yeah. with God. When you move from being religious to being spiritual, it's okay to be religious if you have the relationship, but the relationship then makes you become spiritual. And in your spiritual walk, the more you read and understand the word of God, it begins to take on a different meaning. And so when I read stories like this, I like it because if you would remove the religious aspect from this particular story, yeah. you will begin to see what you're designed to see. And that is Jesus is now led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Yeah. And I like that. I like that. It immediately starts off when he was led by the spirit. He was led up of the spirit into the wilderness full of the Holy Ghost was led by the spirit yeah. into the wilderness. And it would seem funny that God would lead you into the wilderness. And when I read this particular story, it brings back to my mind yeah, the yeah. nation of Israel when they were first freed out of Egypt, yeah. that God didn't take them directly into the promised land, yeah, yeah. but he took them into the wilderness. Yeah, I want you to get it. He took them from Egypt into yeah, yeah. the wilderness, and it puts right back in my mind, here is Jesus, the Son of God. It reminds me of the nation of Israel going into the wilderness, and I want you yeah, to get yeah, this, yeah. that it is very possible to be led by God into a place that's uncomfortable for you to be in. Yeah. Into a place that's uncomfortable for you to be in and it's still 
still be God. It took me a long time before I understood that the God that you serve in your process of growth, in your process of development, yeah. in your spiritual journey, that sometimes he leads you down the path that you are not familiar with. Yeah. And here's what it says. He took them into the wilderness to prove them. And, and here's yeah. what I like about it. it. It shows it shows the methods of God. Sometimes he does the same things, but you got to watch. You got to pay attention because yeah. he took them into the wilderness to prove them. And he at least Jesus into the wilderness for him to be tempted. But both of these come before the time of purpose and blessing. I want you to catch it. That he leads them to be tested before they are blessed. And I want you to get that. That God always put the test before the blessing. And he sent them into the wilderness to prove them. To prove them to see whether or not they would keep his. I want you to get it. Whether or not he would keep. They would keep his commandments. And, and I want you to get it. That, that I want you to understand that. That God sometimes puts you in an uncomfortable place. In order to see whether or not you can. I want somebody to get that. That sometimes what you ought to do when you begin a relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to see if I can trust this person with my heart. And because my heart is so valuable, I want to see whether or not you understand how to handle some certain things. And, and here's what God is saying. He said, I want to put some things in your hand. I want to, I want to elevate you. I want to give you some blessings that, that you don't even know I have in store for you. But but before I can bless you, I got to test you. And somebody don't get it. That, and sometimes he sends you into an uncomfortable place. He sends you to an uncertain place and he allows things to happen to see how you going to respond. What if I was to tell you that your blessing is waiting for you and it's God holding your blessing wow. until he sees that he can trust you with what he want to bless you with. And, and many a times we don't get to the blessing because we don't deal with the testing. We the battles. We we fall and we fall short of the testing time. And I want you to understand it. Could it be that your uncertainty in your life or the un uncomfortable place in your life could be your place of testing that God is saying I want to bless you with some more money but I want to see how you handle your money on this level. I want to bless you with some new resources but I want to see how you handle the resources on this level is God saying, can I trust you to continue to stay on the right path no matter the circumstance? And I want you to get it. It's easy to trust God when things are going good. When I say trust, it's easy to walk according to God's morals and principles while the path is easy and things are going well. But I want you to understand that sometimes God will make things get a little strenuous to see when everybody is not looking when you keep your word. When you cheat, when you can cheat, or when you stand fast on, yeah. I want somebody to hear me. He'll, he'll let some things happen when you manipulate the situation, when you get the opportunity, or will you be honest? Is, is God saying, can I trust you? Can I trust you to do the right thing? Will you continue doing right in the presence of evil? Will you continue to do what's right, even when it's convenient to do what's wrong. He sends them into the wilderness to see, can you handle what I'm about to do in your life? And the way that God determines whether or not you are ready for your next level is whether or not you can handle the level that you are. Let me say it this way. What if your next level of blessing was determined by your level of discipline or self-control? I, I want somebody to get it. That he can't make you no boss if you don't know how to control your attitude. He can't make you a CEO if you don't know how to control your mouth. He can't put you and, and elevate your life if, if you don't know how to deal with yourself and sometimes before God blesses you he'll test you to see if you can handle what it is he wants to do in your life 
And what if I said that your level of discipline will determine your level of blessing? What if I said your level of self-control would determine your level of success? In reality, that's exactly how it goes. That God, he says, your blessing will come to the level that you're able to control yourself because I don't want to give you something um, that you can't handle when you get it. But I want to see, can you, I want somebody to hear me as every parent trusting their child with their car before I just, if you smart, you will see, will your child do what they suppose? Can they be yeah. trustworthy yeah. before I turn my car over to you? Before I give you all this extra, can you be trusted yeah. with, uh, with a little? And then Jesus says it this way, he that is faithful with little will yeah. be faithful in much. And yeah, yeah, yeah. he that is unfaithful in little will be unfaithful with much. And, and many times you're asking God for the million dollar blessing, yeah. but you can't be faithful with the ten dollar blessing. You you asking God for more, but you can't be faithful and yeah. disciplined yeah. with what you yeah. have. And, and I like that God, he'll prove you before he blesses you. Yeah. If you can yeah. prove to be faithful. Uh, I want somebody to hear me. If you're enduring, if you're enduring a testing is because you're about to come into a blessing period and, and how well you do on the test will determine how much or how little God is going to release the blessing in your life. Jesus is tested and here's what I like about that. It shows that even though he is God, we know Jesus is the son of God to be made equal with God, which makes him God. On the one hand, he is God, but then on the other hand, he is still a man like you and me, and I like that. I like that Jesus had to, that I like that Jesus walked the earth like me. I like that Jesus had to go to sleep like me. He got tired like me. He got frustrated like me. He had to wake up like me. He had to eat like me. I like that Jesus is God, but yet he is still man because the God in Jesus could not be tempted, but the flesh of Jesus could. And, and I want you to understand this, that sometimes what the enemy will do, and he won't test your spirit, but he will always entice uh, entice your flesh. He, he yes, can't test yes, the deity yes, of Jesus, will. but he can touch the man, and, and it highlights the two sides to everybody. On one hand, I got my spirit side. On the other hand, I got my flesh side, and while my spirit side can be willing, my flesh can be weak. I need somebody to hear me this morning, and, and the devil does not touch the willing he attacks the weak side. And, and I want you to get it that he's been fasting for 40 days. He's been, he's been on a fast. He knows something is about to happen. And I like how Jesus responds to his wilderness yeah, because yeah, most yeah. of the time what we do when you're at an uncertain place, it causes you to act a certain way. Your attitude gets bad or your, yeah. your mood switches or changes. But I like what Jesus does. He goes into a fast and he fasts because he recognized that the enemy is going to attack when you are most vulnerable. I want somebody to get it. That the enemy does not attack him on day one of the fast. He waits until his body gets hungry. I want you to catch it. That your spirit can be up, but your flesh can be down, and the devil will attack your weak points. And that's what I want somebody to hear me this morning. That, that the enemy is looking for any crack he can slide into. The enemy is looking for any place he can creep his way into. And he does not attack the spirit, but he attacks the spirit. I want you to understand that the devil does not play fair. He don't do it when your mood is good. He does it when your mood is agitated. He does it when you're frustrated. He does it when you feel it some type of way in your body. Then he sends the attack. And, and here's what the devil does. He's not going to attack you just in your old spot. He's going to get my granddaddy was said this way. He's not going to bring you no beans if he know you like rice. And he's not going to bring you no rice if he knows you like beans. And he'll wait until you get so hungry and then feed or entice you to get exactly what it is that you want. And, and I want you to get this, that the enemy does not fight fair. That the devil and the world don't care that you're having a rough day. And I have to tell so many people that if you got a married, if you married at home and you got a husband or a wife at home, that the, that the husband and wife is not designed to pay for 
for the frustrations of your day. Your children are not designed to pay for the frustrations of your day. But I want you to understand that, that the devil and the world don't care what kind of day that you have it. They will entice you out of your Christian character. They'll pull you into yeah, something yeah, yeah. that takes you five minutes to get into, but it'll take you five years to get out of in a moment of weakness and vulnerability. And then I want you to hear yeah, 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 yeah. that the devil does not fight fair, but, but you gotta learn how to fortify yourself yes. mentally and and fortify yourself spiritually and, and fortify yourself emotionally. And this is why yeah. that you got to be a, a, like the man in uh, Psalm number one, that in his law doeth he meditate day and night. It's yeah. not because I want to make people think that I'm spiritual, but it's because I need to fortify my mind because yeah. I know the enemy is going to attack me with negative thoughts. I need to fortify my spirit because I know the enemy is going to entice into, I need somebody to hear me that you yeah, gotta yeah. learn to fortify yourself in the things of God because the enemy is going to attack your yeah, place yeah. of weakness. You gotta fortify yourself, gird up the loins of your mind. You gotta, you gotta fill your mind with positive thoughts because you know negative thoughts are going to come. You got to fortify yourself, and this is why Paul says, "Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to." against the wiles of the devil and, and I want you to understand it in here you gotta fortify yourself so, so that when the enemy attacks you 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 will be able to stand firm and, and tell the devil no matter what you throw at me devil victory shall be mine no matter what you attack my mind with I'm gonna hold fast to the things of my God I believe and I trust in, in God I know it's uncomfortable but I still trust in God I know it's difficult but I still trust in God. I know it's lonely, but I trust in God. He said, turn these stones into bread. And I want you to get it. This is how the devil entices you. He says, uh, aren't you tired? Why don't you just do this? Aren't you sleepy? Why don't you just go to sleep? Aren't you hungry? Why don't you just think? Let, let me marketize that. He'll he'll wait until two o'clock in the morning when when your yeah. body is feeling some type of way. And he said, "Ain't don't you want to be sexual with somebody?" Wow. And, and you got the power. Uh, you got the power yeah. to do it. Uh, there's your phone right there. You know the number. You can call it. That's what he said to Jesus. If you hungry, why yeah. not just turn into bread and, and it's saying you have the power to do what you know is not right to do and I want somebody to hear me this morning that the enemy is waiting to get you at the right place at the right time just so he can entice you out from under your faith in God and, and I want somebody to hear me this morning I want you to catch it this morning that you got the power to do it and the devil is saying that all you gotta do is just do it but, but here's what I gotta uh, get somebody to remember that he'll show you or tell you how it feels to yeah. gratify yeah. but he don't tell you the consequence on the other side yeah. he'll lead you into it but he'll lead you to deal with yeah. the consequences yeah. he'll he'll entice your flesh into an action or activity but then yeah. he'll yeah. lead yeah. you to deal with the consequences and, and this is my word this morning you gotta learn how to overcome yeah. uh, those thoughts of instant gratification uh -huh. and that your flesh will lead you and then leave you here. Uh -huh. he'll, he'll entice you here. Uh, this will yeah. satisfy your lust. This will this will make you feel better if you go off. It'll, it'll make you feel better if you say it. If, it'll make you feel better if you do it. But, yeah. but many times what the devil presents to satisfy will not sustain. Uh -huh. And I want somebody to hear me when I say that this morning. If the enemy is trying to make you satisfy what cannot sustain I need somebody to hear me. He'll he'll satisfy, but he can't su sustain it. He entices your mind out of faith and yeah, into yeah, yeah. flesh. That's what we deal with. We deal with the struggle, the battle of following after my faith in God yeah. or following after my flesh. And I want somebody to hear me uh, this morning. And it's not a problem to feel your flesh, but yeah, but it's yeah, a yeah. problem to follow your flesh. Yeah. That the flesh is going to always be there, but you got to learn how to, that's right, oh, overcome yeah. the urge to step outside of the will oh, of God. And, and I like it. 
And I like it because he doesn't show you the consequence. He only shows you what it's going to be like to, to uh, scratch the itch. And, and I want you to get it that sometimes... Have you ever been there where you do what your body told you to do and then you realize that after you get done doing it, you feel worse than you did before you did it? Or, or when you get done doing it, you realize that it creates a situation that you don't want to have to deal with. And, and that's why I can't stand the devil because he'll make you destroy your life in a moment. He'll make you destroy your future in an action or an activity that you'll later regret for the rest of your life. And this is why I got to tell somebody you got to learn how to overcome the urge of instant gratification. And you have to pray that God give you the strength to overcome uh, overcome the urge. And, and I like that what Jesus does is first he goes on the fast. You got to learn how to get yourself under control. Get it? Yes. That in order to fast, that means you got to push your plate back. That means you got to not eat for a little while. And what it's designed to do is designed to teach you how to get your flesh under control. And, and I need somebody to hear me when I say that. That it's not going to go away, but you got to learn how to get it under uh, control. I need somebody to hear me that, that you would have less need of a miracle if you learn how to control yourself. And if you don't get nothing else from this message today, I want you to take home. I got to learn how to control myself. Control your attitude. You got to learn how to control your lust. You got to learn how to control your mouth. You got to learn how to control your appetite because if you let it take you, it'll destroy uh, the rest of your life. You got to learn how to control yourself. He fasts for 40 days to let his body know you don't control my decisions. My spirit does. You don't control what I do. My spirit does it. Somebody needs to uh, just turn it on in here. Turn off your flesh and turn on your spirit. My feelings don't control how I respond. My feelings don't control what I say and what I do. But my uh, my faith does it. And I don't know how it's going to turn out if I go out. But I do know that if I just hold fast to my faith in God, that my God will reward, uh, he'll reward my faith. And he goes on a fast to, to get his body under control. And let that, word, let that be a word for you this morning. You got to learn how to get yourself under, uh, under control. You got to learn how to tell your body no. You got to learn how to tell your desires no. You got to learn how to tell those thoughts no. You got to learn how to tell the devil no in your life. He, uh, I want somebody to hear me when I say that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That's why you don't cuss folk out, you pray about it. That's why you don't get revenge, you pray about it. Because you're not fighting a physical individual, but you're fighting something spiritual. And I need somebody to understand if you're going to overcome the urge, you got to stop fighting in your body and start fighting in your spirit. And you fast, you take away strength from your flesh, and you put strength in your uh, in your spirit. And this is what Jesus he goes on the fast. He says, even though my flesh is weak, my spirit will still win because I'm going to overcome what the devil is trying to pull me into. And let that be a word for you this morning. I want you to understand that the rest of this week, the devil is going to try to pull you into yes, some he things. He he going to try to entice you into some arguments. He going to try to pull you into some things that make you step outside of your character. But you got to overcome the urge to go off. You got to overcome the urge of slapping somebody. You got to overcome the urge of stooping to somebody's level. You got to overcome the urge to be petty. You got to overcome the urge to talk back about people that's been talking about you. You got to overcome the urge of returning evil for evil. And you got to charge your spirit to pray for those that despitefully use you. To overcome evil with good. To let your light so shine before men that they would see your good works and, uh, and glorify God. And I need somebody to understand. Yes, God. You got to learn how to overcome the urges of your flesh. If you want to see victory in your life, you got to learn to overcome it. Notice I said overcome because it's not going away. And somebody needs to hear me. It's not going away. You got to learn how to overcome it and get it under control. We we fight spiritually with spiritual methods. And, and prayer and fasting. 
everlasting. Jesus said, if you speak to the mountain, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you are, you are able to move mountains. But he said, how be it, get this, how be it that these go not out but by prayer uh, and fasting. And I want, I want somebody to understand it, that you have the power, but you need the discipline. Somebody go catch it. That if you have faith the size of a mustard yeah, seed, yeah. you can move mountains. How be it? These will not go out but by prayer and uh, fasting. And you got the power, but you need the discipline. You got the power, but you need the self-control. Paul, he says it this way, that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. It's, it's saying he's giving you the power to do it, but you need the self-control to get it done. You need the discipline to carry it out. That you got the power to make it happen, but you need the self-control to walk it out. And I need somebody to hear me this morning that God is trying to get me to tell you, you gotta stay walking the principle. You gotta stay walking the principle. The power uh, is in the principle. And Jesus says that man shall not live by bread alone because what the devil wants to do is he wants to entice your body. He wants to make you move by your feelings but Jesus does not respond in his feelings and, and let that be a word for somebody. You got to get out your feelings. You got to you gotta stop taking things so personal. You got to stop wearing your heart on your sleeve and, and sometimes you got to be able to see the bigger picture that Jesus don't respond in his feelings and, and I need somebody to hear me. You can't respond to the devil and how you feel. You can't respond to the devil in your emotions. I feel like, no, don't feel like. You got to get beyond how you feel to what you know. And somebody going to catch it in a minute that you got to overcome your feelings by what you know. I, I had to tell somebody one time somebody heard me and my brother arguing like we was going to shoot each other. And, and at the end of the argument, he asked, he said, Marcus, Ain't you mad at your brother? I said, absolutely. I wish I could slap him because he get yeah. on my nerves. And, and then he said, well, how about you do that? If you do this, you will get back at him for doing that. And I said to him, my brother, this feeling is just temporary. But my feeling don't stop the fact that he's always going to be my brother. And, and I want you to understand something that you got to understand. You got to be able to overcome temporary feelings. For, for, for facts that will never change. And, and sometimes you got to learn how to get over how you feel in the moment and get to what you know will always be what it's supposed to be. And Jesus says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And I want you to get this, that what you know does not have a feeling connected to it, but you got to overcome your feelings by what you know. And, and that will help you to overcome the urge that you feel. I know you want to give it back to him. I know you want to recompense evil for evil, but you got to remember what Jesus, what God said that vengeance is mine saith the Lord and, and I will repay. And if you could just overcome how you feel in the moment by what you know God is going to do, you'll be able to overcome those feelings of uh, I want somebody to hear me this morning. You got to learn how to remember what you know and overcome in, in the moment. You have to overcome your feelings and stay on course. And let that be a word for somebody this morning. You got to overcome the urge so you can stay on course. Every time you move by how you feel, you just delayed your blessing five more years, five more days, five more minutes. But if you can overcome your feelings and stay on track, somebody going to get it in a minute, that you got to learn how to stay on track. You got to overcome how you feel. You got to overcome them thoughts. You got to overcome what somebody said and did to you so that you can stay on. Oh, come on, let's give God a hand of praise. Would you stand this morning? Thank you so much for watching. Or if you're listening, I want to say thank you as well. Never miss a Bible study or a sermon when you subscribe. And if you're on YouTube, tap the bell so you never miss when I post.